Okay, so the goal here is to find coordinates on a unit circle. And we're given the angle uh, on the unit circle. So given an angle, again, we always start at this spot right here in the positive x-axis. It's a unit circle, so what does that mean about the radius of the circle? One. It's 1. So the radius equals 1. Okay, so that point right here is 1, 0. And when we start our angle, if we're given an angle on the unit circle, we're going to go counterclockwise from that. This will be our initial starting side. Okay? So the question might be to find a point on a unit circle somewhere, I don't know, I'll make one up. How about up here somewhere? Okay, we want to find what that point is. We don't know what that point is. And we're given the angle here. Now, since we're just working through with an example here, I'll just make that, I don't know, what do you say, about 70 degrees maybe? So we'll call that 70 degrees. Okay? So the goal here is to find out what that point is. Now, if we think about this for a second, let me move the 70 degrees a little bit closer. We can use trig because we have that 70 degrees to solve this right triangle. Now, how does solving that right triangle help us find that point? What do we know about this x-coordinate right here on this right triangle? Where is the x-coordinate? It's the same as the base length. Yes, it's the same as the base length. So this side right here is the same as our x-coordinate. And what about the y-coordinate? It's that height on this triangle, right? So think about it in that terms. We can solve this triangle. We need one more piece of information. Do we have a side of that triangle already? One. One. What's, what's one on this triangle? The hypotenuse is one. So we know this is one right here. So instead of using, usually we use opposite adjacent, right? So we usually go like opposite and adjacent to that angle. Again, this is our angle, opposite side, adjacent side. Okay, that's what we usually use. But we can use, instead of opposite adjacent, our adjacent side is equal to x. And our opposite side equals y in this, for this point right here. So we can set up a quick trig function to solve that, which would be the adjacent side, we have the hypotenuse, so we're going to use cosine of 70 equals x over 1. Well, cosine 70 equals x, so x equals cosine 70. And we can do the same thing for the uh, opposite side. Sine 70 equals y over 1. So y equals sine 70. So those are coordinates. If I actually, this coordinate right here, I don't have a whole lot of room. So that coordinate right there is cosine 70, sine 70. Now, does that change anything if we don't, or I shouldn't say that if we don't have the 70, but if that 70 changes to a different, to a different number, is that going to change my answer down there? It will change the answer, but what I can do is just, let's erase the 70. Oh, can't do that. If I erase this 70 right here and call it theta instead, because this right here is just theta, we can go through the whole, this whole problem, erasing all the 70s and putting thetas. Erase the 70, 70s, because we could use the same exact idea and concept in all of these. Theta is just an unknown angle, by the way, if you don't know that. And so that means that on a unit circle, anywhere in the unit circle, if you have the angle from our starting side, which is that positive x side, any angle 
will be cosine theta sine theta. Okay? So it's pretty it's pretty easy. Just plug that in. Okay, on this one, let's say we don't have a unit circle. Let's just say we have a random circle. Okay, with radius equal to, I don't know, seven. Lucky number seven. So our radius here is seven. So this point right here is seven comma zero. Okay, the same idea holds true. Just now, if I start there, and I want to find this point, now my hypotenuse is how long? Seven. So I, again, if I called this 70 degrees, okay, then I could find this, say, adjacent side by using cosine, but this time I would say cosine 70 equals A over 7. So A equals 7 times cosine 70. And hopefully we can see that, and we can do the same thing for, for the opposite side. We'll just do that right now. Oops, it's written blue there. So we can do sine 70 equals opposite over 7. So our opposite side equals 7 sine 70. And this time I didn't name it x and y, but we know that in our point right there, since this is A, that would be our x coordinate, A, and our opposite side is O. Okay, I just use different variables instead of x and y. But we still have that, that point now would be 7 cosine 70, 7 sine 70. Whoa, ran out of room. So the same, we could do the same argument we did last time, take the 70s out, substitute them with thetas. So even if it's not a unit circle, every point on here, call this point right here, that point right there would have the r, which is a radius, whatever the radius of our circle is, r cosine theta comma r sine theta. And the only thing you have to be careful with when you're working with these problems is I work with some problems in the first quadrant, okay? If I want this point right here, I'm actually going to take the angle. Let's change colors real quick. So just a little side note. If I want this point right here, I have to take the angle from this positive x going in the counterclockwise direction. So if I want that point, I'm going to have to find that angle, okay? That'll also help you because that'll give you your positives and negatives in the quadrants. But as long as you have that angle, you're good to go. Questions about unit circle stuff?